All right, my name is Dana Johnson. I work with USDA Wildlife Services, and uh, we've already built a door for the trap, so now we're in the field. We're going to show you how to quickly build a, a corral trap. We have 13 T-posts. We've got a T-post driver. We've got a T-post puller, in case we need to pull one out. Hammer. Wire cutters. Rope, chain link fence ties, rebar ties, six inch steel rebar ties, a rebar tie tire, a pair of pliers, some rebar, some marking paint. And we call this trapping wire. It's about uh, 12 gauge wire. You can use a 16 gauge that you can get at the uh, Lowe's or a department store, but this this will work a little bit better. We also have a 86 inch piece of rope that we'll use to make our circle. Now I'm making this by myself. If you have two people, there's some of these things you might not need. But oh, and we also have our fencing. Three sixteen foot goat panels. All right, we're out in the field. We picked this area. It's semi shaded. We have water behind us. It's a prime pig habitat. We know from the landowner there are pigs in this area, so we decided on the spot next to the road where we can easily drive up, bait our trap, check our trap, load up any pigs we might have uh, caught and euthanized. So we picked a somewhat of a level ground, it's somewhat hilly, so we can take a shovel and, and level it out. First thing I'm going to do is make my circle. Alright, here's where my trap's going to be, my three panels. My door's going to be right here, so when I'm coming and checking the trap, I can see if the door is shut or not from a distance. Making an X, so I can go ahead and get my door, my T-post set for my door. Alright, we're about to put our door in. We pre-measured, got our marks for our T-post. And when you're putting in these T-posts, You want to slide angle in on these doors, it'll hold that door a lot tighter. See how tight that is? That's what you do a slide angle on the inside. Alright, we've installed our door and we've laid out our T post, minimum six foot high, and they're about four feet apart, give or take. So we've got them all on a circle, and we're gonna go ahead and get, get started driving T posts. Alright, we've driven our 13 T posts. You want the uh, notches on the inside so your wire will hold to them because your wire's on the inside. And when you have these crowd traps, these things almost act like a rubber band. These pigs can hit this wire and it's, uh, it'll, it'll flex. A real important thing about this trap right now is you notice it's a circle. Don't build your traps in a triangle or a square because those pigs will pile on and hit the corners and bust it. When you have these circles, they're more apt to just walk around in the circle. So we learned that a long time ago. Make sure your trap's in a circle. Also, well, this type of door, we like to put a T-post near it, near the door, because when these pigs hit this door, they usually won't hit the door. They hit right at the edge of the door, so we have an extra T-post right here on the edge. And when the uh, person's coming to check the trap, they're coming down the road, they can see this door is shut, and most of those pigs will hang to the back, and they can ease up in here quietly and uh, start putting the pigs down. Yeah. 
All we're doing now is wrapping these uh, panels in. Alright, what we did is we took the panel and we slid it in behind the T-post. Remember we drilled the holes in the door so I can wrap this around. And just tighten it up. Once again, I'm using trap wire. You can go to most trapping websites and buy this. It's a little bit thicker gauge. The most important spot when you're wiring is the bottom. Depending on your soil type, this is kind of good play here. If you're in sandy loam, those pigs will get their nose up under it. They possibly could root out. So what you want to do on the bottom is I like to double it up. Go with the lowest rung. And really get that one in there tight. And I'm just taking these, wrapping them around. And then folding them in. Just keeps them in place. Once again, it's bottom rung, double it up. There we go, we're going to do that to all of them. Alright, well these panels overlap. You want at least about a foot overlap. I'm hold that up. Okay. And you want to kind of your T-post on the overlap, and what we're using these rebar ties. You take rebar tie, and you'll go down each side, down the middle. Probably want to put five or six. So we're just going to use these rebar ties and then once it's tied together then we're going to use the use our trap wire and tie it off to the, to the panel, I mean to the T-plate. What I want to talk about real quick is the different panels. Now this is a four foot high goat panel. It's a four by four inch square. Extremely small Schultz can get out of here but you know, once they get two or three weeks old they can't. These are about $35 a piece. The, the negative about this is, is your larger bores, you know, some of them can jump out of this. Not a lot, but they can. But they're $35 a piece compared to the five foot high horse panels, which is a two by four inch square. Most of those big bores can't jump out. The bad part is they're, they're around $75 a piece, so you know, you're looking at about a $110 difference between those two types of panels. So it's more up to you. If you can afford the, the bigger panels, the five foot high horse panels, I'd go with that. But if you're on a limited budget, these do work. Now, the ones I do not recommend is the, is the cattle panels, which is a five foot or four inch by six inch. Those a 40 pound haul can get out of. We've got evidence, uh, photo evidence, about a 40 pound pig once they get their head through they can get out and plus they're so big that when they hit those panels they get their nose in there they can bust those panels apart so I do not recommend those yes they are $19 but I would at least go to the these type panels right here very good I've caught a lot of pigs in these type traps once again some of your bigger boars can jump over more economical the bigger panels yes better all around a lot more expensive so you have to kind of decide according to your pocketbook and how many traps you're going to have to build. On, on average, I like one trap for 300 acres of 
hog habitat. Not open field, but hog habitat, swamp lowlands, and in the state of Alabama, you know, during deer season we can't really trap pigs, so you're looking at summertime swampy habitat where those pigs are hanging. So take that into account. If you've got a thousand acres but only have a couple hundred acres of good swamp land, you're only looking at maybe one trap. So, uh, you know, just take all that into account. But once again, this is a finished trap. We'll go over baiting in another session, but we're ready to go. If we have pre-baited, we've got our trigger here. They bump it, we've caught. All right, what I've got here is our trigger mechanism. We call this a root trigger. It's a very simple trigger, very common. You know, we'll go over a lot of the other triggers later, but this is, with this type of door, this is about your best trigger. We've got an 18 inch piece of rebar. We've uh, hammered it down to the ground. And what we've done, we've got a stick I just cut. Now, the only reason these are orange is so you can see them. We'll take our stick, just make a little loop. Put it behind. What we do is usually, once you've pre-baited these pigs in for about two weeks, the worst mistake you can make is build this trap, set your trigger, and pile a whole bunch of corn right up under your trigger because you're going to catch one pig. After you've pre-baited for two or three weeks, you used your cameras, used the feeder, made sure that the entire sounder is going in. You set your trigger, and you put a little bit of bait under here, and when the pig comes feeding on this, their eyesight's extremely poor. They probably can't really see much. So they come in, they bump stuff all night, and all they do is just bump that, and your door drops. <laughs> 